Hi there, Pete here. Hope everyone is well. Back again, this time with a new and improved microphone to help dispel even more clearly the nonsense in the world. In this video, we'll be checking out something that we all love so dearly, and that's the nonsense contained in generalizations. Now, generalizations are commonly used within our everyday language. And although we can be exposed to generalizations when we share conversations with friends, family and work colleagues, generalizations are also regularly used by many other people, such as politicians, TV presenters and sports personalities to name a few. In fact, generalizations are often cited by almost everybody, and in many cases, generalizations are a linguistic method employed to express a greater degree of application, consensus, unity, and so on. In other words, generalizations are simply sweeping statements, and everybody would agree to this, wouldn't they? <laughs> but although generalizations are a common linguistic tool, my question to you is, do generalizations reflect reality? Or, in other words, is it right for us to be using sweeping statements such as generalizations in the first place? Well, to help shed some light on these, let us begin with a few definitions of the word generalize from Evelyn. Make general or broad statement by inferring from specific cases. Make something more widespread or common. To infer or form a general principle, opinion, conclusion, etc. from only a few facts, examples, or the like. Thanks Evelyn. I hope you haven't worn out your broom with all that sweeping. So it seems then, as touched upon earlier, that generalizations are essentially any statement that contain a specific claim that is widened or broadened with the use of certain words to make that specific claim applicable to a wider audience, thereby giving it greater impact. To give us a better idea of a generalization though, let's look at a few examples of generalizations in use. I know you have some tough matches ahead, but with 10 wins out of 10 in qualifying, I hope you'll go there with every confidence. The whole country is right behind you, and we're wishing you every success. Let's remember that it was a man from this state who first carried the banner of the Republican Party to the White House, a party founded on the values of self-reliance and individual liberty and national unity. Those are values that we all share. There is nothing like a World Cup to bring our country together. All of those club rivalries fade away and we'll all be joining together, gathering around the television, sitting in the pub, which will be open late, and cheering on our national team. I sometimes think that the Liberals are always so angry because they believe the grandiose promises of the liberation movements. They're disappointed because most women do not wish to be liberated from their essential natures as women. Love. Paul McCartney said it had been a privilege to know and love her. Other friends spoke of their shock, but also what it was that made her special. People always say, why do you think Scylla was just so popular? Because we all feel as if we owned a little piece of her. Um, but the fact is, she had that Liverpool aspect of being down to earth. And here's an example of a generalised statement all of us should be more than familiar with. And finally, here's a few examples for all those viewers who have been emotionally hurt by members of the opposite sex. Now, can anyone notice anything odd about generalised statements such as the ones we've seen? Well, even though everybody should be able to work out what's odd about them, there are no prizes available for the winners. But to overcome your disappointment, 
I should tell you that it is very simple. Basically, the strange thing about generalizations is that no evidence is presented to justify extending the application of a specific contained within a claim or statement to cover a wider audience. So, even though it is claimed everyone has their cross to bear, for example, there is no evidence to support the claim that everyone has indeed a cross to bear. I mean, has everyone actually been asked whether they have a cross to bear to make the statement true? I'm unsure about you, but I've never been asked, and I would imagine you haven't either. In fact, concerning this particular claim, I'm pretty sure nobody has ever been asked at all. So returning to our clips, David never asked me whether I'd be supporting the national women's football team, nor was I asked by Obama whether I share those values. And as for Scylla, I personally never knew her. It seems then that generalizations give a speaker the green light to speak on behalf of other people, even though other people haven't expressed any opinion on the subject matter or even been consulted. In fact, because all generalizations lack any kind of evidence to make them accurate and true, whenever we hear people utter a generalization of any description, Essentially, all they are doing is assuming and thereby distorting reality. And here's a short clip demonstrating our point. Excuse me, my boy, but can I help you? I'm sorry, sir. I don't think I know you. I am Professor Appenstall, my boy, and I am wondering why you are in here right now. Shouldn't you be in class or something? I came in here to post something on the bulletin board. And what might that be, my dear boy? Are you posting a notice about a rock concert or some other comparable activity? Excuse me, Professor Appenstall, but why would you ask me that question? Well, my boy, what is it then that you posted? Professor Appenstall, I do not in any way wish to disrespect you but I cannot help but wonder why you would assume that I'm posting a notice about a rock concert. Is it because I have long hair or something analogous to that? Um, well, uh... I want to be careful myself, Professor Appenstall, but it seems to me that you are forming your opinion of me, and hence what I may be currently doing, based on a small sampling of rock musicians you may have observed who have long hair. I have to say, with all due respect, Professor Appenstall, that it seems as though you have come to a hasty generalization about me merely based on the fact that rock stars, or some people who like rock music, and would like to be identified with rock musicians, may likewise have long hair. I can understand how you might draw this incorrect conclusion, and yet I must clarify that I cannot be identified as a rock music enthusiast based on my long hair. Good grief, my dear boy. You are correct in what you are saying. My goodness, I am indeed committing the hasty generalization fallacy. Thank you, my boy, for being so astute and pointing this out to me. Well, there you go. It certainly seems nonsense to consider any claim or statement containing a generalization to accurately reflect reality, unless, of course, the statement or claim is supported by evidence. If not, then it makes more sense to consider any generalization to be nothing more than an assumption, as not only do they distort reality, they also contain nothing of substance whatsoever, and it would be best not to generalize at all. So next time there's an international sporting event your country is participating in, and you don't want to be part of, as you're simply not interested, don't just suffer in silence, make it known to everybody that you're not interested, 
and send the team all the worst of luck you possibly can. Or, if you haven't got the courage to do that, just simply cheer on the opposing team. So till next time, always remember, if something doesn't make sense, it's nonsense. <laughs>